everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Becca, if we've never met before, and this is my YouTube channel where I talk about all the houseplant things. <laughs> there is a lot to talk about, so let's get started. Today I'm going to be creating another cactus garden. If you have not seen my previous videos about my cactus gardens, they are some of my most prized planty possessions. They are so, so beautiful, if I do say so myself. And you should definitely check out this video up in the box over here if you are interested in learning how to make a succulent and cactus garden. I have been gathering some really awesome pieces to add into my last cactus garden. And I say my last cactus garden because I've really run out of space to make more. This video is also going to be a Q&A, so a lot of you guys asked me questions on Instagram and YouTube, and I have compiled them, and I will be answering them as I am making this succulent cactus garden. Two of the cactus pieces that I will be adding to this little box were sent to me by the company Succulents Box. And when this company reached out to me to send me some plants, I was really, really excited because I have had a lot of people ask me where to find good cactus and succulents online. And as I was scrolling through Succulents Box website, I saw so many awesome, awesome cactus that I even wanted and I live in like the cactus capital of the world. So definitely, definitely would recommend Succulents Box. Let's open it up together and see how well it's packaged and what kind of cactus that I picked up. We have the order summary, classic. And then we also have some care instructions, which is really nice to get some of these. And it tells you just how to care for these specifically, what kind of light they need, um, how much water they need. Whoa, 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 this is so cool. Okay, so these are the two pieces that I got. They're wrapped up currently, but I was not expecting this. It includes two nursery pots. They don't send them nursery pot in, interesting. And then we got some packing cubes and the potting mix. Nice. Okay, so now for the plants. Let's check them out. These are packaged really, really nice. I always say that you want to package your plants as if they are made of glass because then you're really eliminating chances of them being crushed in the mail. Oh my gosh, this is so cool. This is the Bishop's Cactus and I have been obsessed with these and I have not been able to find them in my local nurseries, which is very surprising to me, but I saw it on their website and I said, can I have the Bishop's Cactus? <laughs> and they very, very thankfully obliged. It looks like it has like a star on the top of it. That is so cool. I love this so much. And then the second plant, which I believe is a Peruvian old man cactus and I can feel the spikes through this, so I need to be careful. Oh my goodness, it's so cute. So this is the old man cactus. It is so beautiful, it is in such beautiful shape. Wow, I'm really, really happy with this. You guys, I was really hoping that that would be as good as it was. These are so awesome. They look really, really good. I'd say very comparable to something that I would find at a nursery here in Tucson. So if you don't live in a place where good cactus is accessible to you, definitely check out Succulents Box. Um, I will have their website down below as well as links to the specific cactus that I ordered from them. It isn't necessarily a sponsored video, but these plants were gifted to me and I think that since they are so beautiful, I should definitely give them like a substantial shout out. So thank you so much to Succulents Box for sending me these plants. I'm really excited to incorporate them in my cactus garden. And speaking of cactus garden, let's get making that thing. Okay, so it is a different day entirely in this video. I needed to film that first section because you can't leave a plant in a box for multiple days, obviously, so I needed to unbox them. And now it is time to repot and do a Q&A. So I'm really excited to be answering some questions. I got so many questions. I'm always surprised when this happens because I feel like no one's going to ask me anything. I broke them down into a personal category and a plant category. The personal category has less questions, so I'm going to do those first. Hi. So the first question is how old am I and do I have any siblings? So I am 23. Yes, I'm 23. <laughs> And I have a younger sister, her name is Brooke, she's 16, no, 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 she's 15, she's going to be 16 soon. 
and she is so sweet. She's such a light in my life. I love her so much. Next question, where am I planning on traveling to next? I am planning on traveling, well, on a small scale. We're going back to Daniel's hometown in Iowa for Christmas, and it'll actually be my first Christmas away from my family, which is super weird. It feels very odd, but I am excited because my in-laws feel like family. I don't really feel like I'm going to be missing out on the family experience for Christmas because they've been so sweet and welcoming and it's truly been like an amazing experience. And then after that, I don't know, I'm trying to convince Daniel to go on a trip for my birthday in March, but no clue if that will actually happen. I would really love to go to France and do like a train trip through France or a road trip through France. I love France, it's so beautiful. If money was not an issue, somebody asked me where I would go, I would definitely go to France. And we could, so we just need to save up a little bit in the next couple of months. How long have I been growing out my hair and do I trim my own bangs? So I've been growing my hair out for a really long time, probably since junior year of high school is when I decided I wanted to make that a priority so that was maybe like 2013 2012 ish i don't know i just kind of started taking care of my hair a lot better and it started growing really fast and long so if you can't see it it's in a ponytail and it's been in a random bun for the last couple of videos if you have long hair you totally understand that it can just become too much and especially in the summertime it's just so hot where i live it's difficult to want to leave it down and then the next question was do I trim my own bangs? I'm going to sit up for a second. I need to mix some soil. I do trim my own bangs and that was really important for me to learn how to do because it's super expensive if you don't know how because you're going to get your hair cut. Like for me, my hair grows really fast so I would have to go and get my bangs trimmed like every two weeks-ish. Next question is, does my love of plants inspire my style? I would say definitely yes, because I really love dressing in floral print, lots of colors and florals and stuff like that. What is my favorite book or book series? For sure, hands down, Harry Potter. And it's really crazy because I didn't read it until I was well into adulthood. And I wish so badly that I read it as a younger child because it would have been so amazing to have met Harry, Ron, and Hermione before then because they're incredible characters and J.K. Rowling just did such a good job creating them and the character development is just absolutely insane. As someone who writes and enjoys literature, that is just so impressive that she was able to create this world that people like long to go to and it's just crazy. I think that that is one of the coolest books I've ever read. I also read another series. It was called the Body Finder series, which sounds a little bit scary because it is. It's a little bit of a thriller book series and it's about this girl who can feel or sense dead bodies and it is such a good series. I loved it so much. I read it in high school and I still think about it all the time. Okay, where do I see myself in 10 years? Five to 10 years. So in five years, this is such a big question. In five years, I hope that I am, you know, living somewhere that I really enjoy. I am maybe with my first child, um, either pregnant or already had my first child by that time. Who knows what will actually happen, but I think that in around four years I would like to start having kids. Hold on, I'm trying to unpot this cactus. So I would like to have a greenhouse in 10 years <laughs> and sell plants and grow plants and keep collecting rare plants and all this fun stuff. I have a lot of dreams. And maybe in five years I will have accomplished some of these things. Sorry, I'm trying to tell loud. I have to, ouch! Oh my god, my finger! Careful, Leo. I have to dig down pretty deep for this one because it's very top heavy. There we go. Now I have some questions about Leo. What do I like about Leo? Well, I love that he is so playful and kind to everybody he meets. He is a super, super friendly dog. And he's also obviously really, really cute as you have seen. I'm sure he is a very, very striking and attractive dog. So I like that too. 
Oh, I just dropped dirt all over him. I wish so badly that I could do this outside and film, but it would be way too loud. Somebody asked me what my greatest accomplishment in life is, and I would say it's tied between two things. The first being graduating from college, and um, I'm really proud that I graduated college, and I'm also really proud that I graduated college with really good grades. I'd say that that was a huge accomplishment for me, and then also, Marrying my husband has been a really sweet accomplishment, and I think it's, I don't know, it might be kind of weird to call that an accomplishment, but I always wanted to get married, and I wanted it to be someone that I loved a lot, and I do love Daniel a lot, so I'd say that I accomplished that in life, and yeah, I'm really, really glad that Daniel came along and all of that happened, so definitely a really sweet accomplishment. A bunch of people have asked me this question, and I figured I would just answer it to not get asked this question again, hopefully, maybe. But a bunch of people ask me my ethnicity. I am Hispanic and white. My dad is Cuban and my mom is white, and that is my ethnicity, so I'm Latina. So what is the best soil for cactus? And perfect, because I'm working on some cactus right now. The best soil for cactus is a cactus soil that is a soil that is extremely well-draining. and a lot of the nurseries that I buy plants from, I will get the plant from them and the soil is basically just rocks and just like a tiny bit of soil mixed in, like sometimes there's cocoa choir mixed in there as well. Okay, so I'm realizing that I'm super distracted and I want to give these questions more attention than I am, so I'm going to just quickly finish potting all of these plants up and then I will answer these plant questions, just you and me, and yeah, so <laughs> cue the time lapse. Okay, so I finished repotting all of those cactus and I'm realizing that I'm going to need even more cactus than I thought because that planter is not anywhere near being full and this always happens. So if you are going to be making a clustered cactus planter, definitely get more cactus than you think you're going to need. Okay, so on to the questions now. Why am I... <laughs> Thank you, Leo. The next question on my list is why am I getting into more rare plants? And I think that the reason mostly is I'm getting a little bit bored with common plants. It doesn't really feel like an accomplishment to find a pothos at the grocery store, which I know that at one point it really was cool to me, but now it's just not. And so I'm looking onto the next thing in collecting plants and that next thing is rare plants. And I just find the chase of finding a rare plant kind of fun and I've just been really enjoying it and also I have completely committed to the whole humidity thing so I feel like since I've done that I can have those more rare plants because I've always avoided them because I didn't want to keep up the humidity necessary but now that I'm realizing that it's actually not that hard I am going to I don't know start going more into that direction and this isn't to say that I don't like common plants anymore I mean obviously I have a lot of common plants in my house I've made an entire video about the common plants that I love. The thing is, I'm just moving on to look for new, different kinds of plants that might be a little bit more rare. Okay, the next question is, do I use grow lights in the winter, and if so, which kind? So I did make a video about this, and I'll link it up in the cards, and I use a grow light that I found on Amazon, actually, and I use it in the winter, yes, and I'm not sure where exactly I'm going to put it this year. I'm probably going to put it somewhere in my living room, and I am going to be getting more like strip light grow lights to put in a bookshelf or something like that. <laughs> he needs attention. He's just going wild down here. And so that will be probably a video. I'll probably make a video about my winter grow light setup this year. Okay, next question is my least favorite plants. Um, I think that there's a few kind of plants that I just don't really see the hype in. And I think that that would be... Ugh, I'm going to sneeze. Oh my goodness. Allergies have been so bad this fall. <sighs> okay, I don't understand why people like crotons. I think that they're pretty ugly, but 
you know, to each their own. And then also there's an anthurium. It's probably the most kind, the most common anthurium, and it has this really like waxy flower. And I just don't particularly enjoy that plant either. Other than that, I don't think that there's any, oh, polka dot plant. I hate polka dot plants. They look so bad when they grow out and stretch and usually they do grow out and stretch. So I just don't like those plants either. Okay, next question. How many plants have I killed? Way too many to name. I made a video that was about a plant funeral and talking about all the plants that I had killed. And that was maybe in January. It's like super early in my YouTube career. I'll link that down below if you're interested in seeing it. But yeah, I've killed a lot of plants and a lot more since that video. Probably too many to count, but definitely succulents are probably at least half of that. So I'm not buying succulents anymore, as I said. How did I first get into plants? So like most people, I started off with succulents and killed them and thought I couldn't do plants. So I took a few years off. A couple years after that, for some reason, I had a lot of success with the basil plant and that gave me the confidence I needed to buy this houseplant right here. Actually, this is a burgundy rubber tree and that is my first houseplant I ever bought. And then from there, I just took a lot of clippings of other and various plants. And I have this Monstera from a clipping and you can see it is pretty sizable now. So definitely if you are just getting started with plants, you should take some clippings off of some friends' plants and get your jungle started because that is how I started. Okay, advice for a successful houseplant Instagram. So I actually did make a video about how I organize and keep up with my Instagram for my plants. And so I'll link that in the cards or down below. And I go over how I take the photos of my plants and everything like that. Other than that, I would have to say, if you want your account to grow, you have to make it a priority. You can't just post pictures and expect that all these people are going to come to you. There's definitely a lot that goes into growing an Instagram account and there's a lot that I need to still learn and so I'm constantly learning. But most of all, the best way that I have found growth and like true fulfillment in, you know, Instagram for my plants is just by talking to people. And once I became more personal with my posts and I started talking to people about things that weren't always necessarily about plants, that is when my account started growing and that is when people started to actually engage with my content because we all love plants, we all love to talk about plants, but there is so much more to us as people than the fact that we love plants. The next question is, what do I say when people ask me for a cutting of a plant? So I made a video about this on Tuesday. I'm sorry that I keep saying that, but I don't want to repeat myself too much in my videos. Um, if I don't want to trade with somebody, I'm not interested in them, or I don't want to give a cutting of the plant that they're looking for, which happens all the time, especially with my variegated arrowhead vine, people ask me multiple times a day for a cutting. And the truth is, I don't want to give a cutting of that to someone that I don't know. I would prefer to give it to someone local or a friend that I've made. So basically what I say is, you know, thank you so much for offering to trade or thank you so much for reaching out to me, but I'm not interested in trading that plant at this time. I hope that you find it in the future or something like that. So that's usually something that I say. And as long as you're polite, people should respond kindly because they're asking for a piece of something that you own. So definitely don't feel bad if you don't want to share a cutting with somebody. It's totally normal and I understand. And if you want to know more about that subject, you can check out my plant trading video that I posted on Tuesday with Pam. What is a plant that you struggled with for a while and now have the care down? I really, really have struggled with the ficus family and I feel like I have finally gotten the hang of it. They are so finicky and will drop their leaves and just everything is just so dramatic. And I have learned to work through all of that and I've learned to not be so heartbroken when a leaf drops because it's just a leaf and it will grow more. It's not a big deal. So the ficus family. What's a plant that I used to hate but have come to love? When I first started into plants, I had no clue why people were so obsessed with pileas. I thought they were so ugly and now I have a lot of them because my mother plant is so prolific and I think that is a reason that I really, really appreciate them now. Um, I bought one because I was like, you know what, well, might as well, I'm interested to see what the hype is and then after like a few weeks of having it, I was like, okay, I get it. <laughs> so I definitely really love that plant now and I get it. Am I ever overwhelmed with my plants? <coughs> oh, Leo! <laughs> yes, I am overwhelmed with my plants. If like especially the moments I'm overwhelmed are when I have to go on a trip and I have to water every single plant before I go. That's definitely an overwhelming experience because I have 
maybe 70 or 80 plants right now. I don't know exactly how many, but yeah, when you have a lot of plants or even just a few plants, it's kind of stressful to make sure that they're okay before you go on a trip. So that is definitely a time where I felt overwhelmed. I think maybe another time was when I was moving, but any time I have to tend to like all of them at once, that is when I get stressed out because, because usually I handle them in batches. So it doesn't feel like, you know, that much. What is my go-to information source for new plants and troubleshooting? Um, I would definitely say that I go to Plantarina's YouTube channel a lot of the time if I have a question about a specific plant or like a certain, you know, troubleshooting thing because she has a lot of really great information, um, like specific informational videos, which is really, really helpful. Basically anybody on YouTube, you know, Plantarina, Summer Rain Oaks, uh, Harley G does a lot of really inf informational videos. <laughs> I don't know why I can't say that word. So definitely I go to YouTube. Um, I used to Google a lot of things, but then I realized that all of the results would be like so similar. It would be just tweaked ever so slightly. And, you know, sometimes you just want someone with a personal experience with the plant and not someone who's writing copy for a website. What is a plant that has the most sentimental value? I would say the plant that I would save in a fire, the most sentimental value is this baby right here. It is definitely my most special plant. I love it so much. I love the story behind it. I posted the story of this plant on my Instagram stories the other day and basically I started it from one leaf and here it is today. And I always say that, but I have never really showed photos of it. What is my favorite plant family? I really, really enjoy Syngoniums right now. I also will always love Monsteras. There are so many different kinds of Monsteras I'm learning as well. Like my Monstera collection is not that diverse and I'm really interested in diversifying it and just exploring more of what that genus has to offer because there is so much. Where do I usually buy plants? I usually buy plants online recently and I really like Gabriella plants, uh, Tennessee Tropicals, Steve's Leaves. I also like Etsy a lot to find specific plants. Um, there's a lot of great Etsy sellers and just look at the reviews to make sure that they are credible. Um, definitely leave a review on those Etsy websites because it helps so much for, you know, prospective buyers. So a lot of online lately because the nurseries where I live are not carrying the plants that I'm looking for. And it's really sad. I wish that I could shop locally because I'm a really big supporter of that, but they just don't have what I'm looking for. I try to shop locally for about everything else with plants, but the actual plant itself, I've been doing a lot of online shopping. Okay, last question here. I, there was a lot and I didn't get to all of them. I'm so sorry, but... I want to make sure this video isn't like three hours long. Um, what are some obscure plants I want to buy but don't know where to find? Um, okay, if you saw my wish list video, I talked about the Syngonium batic, and I have no clue where I can find that plant. I've looked online, I've looked everywhere, and I cannot find a source. So if you know where I can find a Syngonium batic in the United States, or if you want to trade, let me know, and that would be really cool because that is, it feels like an obscure plant because I can't find it you know, a place where I can buy it anywhere. So let me know if you have any leads on that or any sources that you know of. Okay, you guys, thank you so much for making it through this video. It's felt like this video filming has gone on forever because I've been in three different, you know, frames and sections, but thank you for getting through it. And thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video and you enjoyed getting to know me more, definitely follow me on Instagram. I post a lot of, you know, life content on Instagram and usually it's like, it's like 90% plants, 10% life. So if you want some of that, definitely go check out my Instagram and subscribe to my channel. All right. I will see you in the next one. Bye.